Hi, welcome to the Massachusetts Pirate Party uh, April 6th, 2023 member meeting. Um, for those watching in not real time, um, we hope you find this useful. Uh, this, uh, please identify, my name is James O'Keefe, I'm captain of the Massachusetts Pirate Party. Steve Revelak. Sorry, Steve. And Joseph Onorowski. Excellent. Um, so we have a, a detailed agenda here. Um, so uh, is there any adjustments to the agenda? Nothing here. Uh, yeah, nothing here. I'm fine. Okay. Um, I think. Uh, any reports? Uh, right. Nothing of note. Okay. Um, so moving on, so for decisions endorsements, we have a bunch of upcoming events that uh, we've identified, um, either because people have suggested them or they just kind of crossed in front of us. Um, and the immediate one coming up is April 21st for Extinction Rebellion's Earth Day rally and March on a Friday. Um, that's a march from Boston City Hall to the State House. Uh, June 3rd is the Trans Resist Resistance March and Festival. Uh, we did that last year. June 10th is the Boston Pride Parade and Festival. Uh, and then June 17th is the Boxborough Fifers Day. Um, Thoughts on whether we should a attend those events, and uh, if so, you know, turn try and turn people out to them. I have no objection. Uh, can we do an email blast? See if we can get any volunteers to attend. Yeah, I mean, I think I think if we decide we we're going to go, then you know we. We put up a page where people can sign up for the events and we email them out the way we've done in the past. So I guess the question is, you know, are, are these things that we want to do uh, as an organization as opposed to just individuals who choose to show up or not? I mean, I support Instinction Rebellion. I think what they're doing is really good stuff. So. Uh, I'm in favor of supporting it. I'm just not sure of the time commitment for myself personally. Okay. Thoughts, Steve? Yeah, I mean, I I recall an email exchange um, with the person uh, with the person who was involved with the Boxborough Fifers Day. Um, I don't know anything about it. <laughs> um, you know, I could definitely support the other three in terms of actually attending. I might be able to make the one on June 3rd. Okay. Um, the Boxborough Fifers Day um, would basically give us space. I think we need to bring our own table and our own uh chairs and um and tent and all of that but it would be an opportunity to tell people about us to hand out flyers on how to protect your privacy and things like that um do we do we want to i mean i you know we can say that we want to be there um and see who's going to show up and if we don't have turnout then you know from drumming people out uh then you know we we don't we don't do that particular event if there's not enough turnout 
Does that seem like a reasonable approach? I think that's reasonable. Um, the only thing I would say is Boston Pride, the only additional thing I would say is Boston Pride Parade and Festival, they want like three to four hundred dollars to 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 get, you know, a festival um table, which seems I don't know, high. <laughs> and and to have you know, if we do like three events back to back, that's I don't know. That's that seems like a lot, but Uh, what if, can we do a table for one day? And I mean, the other two days we just attend? No, 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 I mean, the Boston Pride Parade is, like, one day. Or, or I mean, sure. I'm sure that there's limited availability, you know? But, I mean, we definitely have that in the bank account. No, I know we do. I'm just not sure it's, um, considering we would have you know, events possibly the third, the tenth, and the seventeenth. That may be more difficult to get people to turn out to if we have three events than if we only have two. And then when you factor in, it's like three or four hundred dollars per table. I see. So there are three events that weekend. No, no, there are three three events over three weekends. One one oh, each weekend. Well, one I am fine third, with whatever you're saying. One the seventeenth. Yeah. So I guess my recommendation would be to do the Extinction Rebellion event, the Transit Resistance March and Festival and or Festival. Um and the Foxborough Pfeiffer's Day, and then you know have encourage people to come to the to to come to those. Certainly, we'll have our conference on the thirteenth of May, so that's certainly a way of turning people out as well. I th yeah, I think that's a reasonable approach. Does that work for you, Joe? It does. That it does okay all right well then i guess we can we can do that um we'll have posts up and sign up forms and all of that um soon um okay so the next thing on the agenda then is the restrict act um that is the restricting oh my god i didn't realize it was restricting and the restrict act oh, i hate when they do that uh, restricting the emergence of security threats that risk information and communications technology or the restrict app, which is basically the anti-TikTok Huawei um, bill, <laughs> so, which, which we talked about in the last pirate news, the last two pirate news is in one way or the other. Um, so should yeah, we... I mean, to me, it slightly terrifies me because it's the wording is just so broad. It's just going to be so easy for, like, the opposite side to just completely abuse. You know, the wording is just so broad. I know what they're trying to accomplish with it, and it's not them against that idea, you know, because we want to keep our interests safe because I want to see tomorrow. However, I don't want to give away today. One of the I've um I've only looked at the like a a little bit of little bit of stuff regarding the restrict act, and you know I I, I just feel compelled to note that you know the safe harbor agreement that the <laughs> um you know the U.S. had with the European 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 Union was struck down a couple of years ago because. You know, essentially that the, you know, folks in the EU weren't willing to believe that information collected by 
tech companies in the U.S. would not be shared with national intelligence agencies in the in the United States. <laughs> so personally, I find the whole idea pretty damn funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good point. Um, so are you saying all the information I could just originally came from Europe? They're the source code. Say again, Joe. So all the really juicy information really came from Europe. We should tell trying to spy on Europe instead of us. No, 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 no. It's uh, basically the European government broke off a, uh, a essentially a data management treaty um, or a data sharing treaty they had with the United States because they felt that European citizens' data was not safe in the custody of American companies because, you know, government agencies can issue national security letters and just, you know, go rummage through your stuff, um, you know, without any warning. And it seems like now the United States is concerned that, well, hey, someone else might be doing that to other people. <laughs> Except the Europeans, you know, make sure people have privacy. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, um, do we want to oppose this? Yeah, I think we could oppose it. Yeah, yeah I would rather oppose it. I agree. So, 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 so noted. Um, and I'll put together a page of, um, and we can put together the text. Um, I'll send it to the activist list. Um, so next thing was the pro cash plank. Um, let me go to wherever that document is. All right, so the text, um, no, there's a lot of things here that have been suggested. I'll put this in the chat. Uh, edits. I mean, this isn't a bad outline. Okay, but how do we put it into a position? Well, this would take take thought and editing, which I'm not up to doing right now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, do we want to push this back uh, to the next meeting then? Yeah, let's. All right. Or maybe before the next video meeting. Sure. Anyone who wants to rewrite it is free to do so. <laughs> sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's fine. Yeah. Uh, um, unfortunately, I'm just on the phone, so I can't see the link.
All right. Uh, so for those people viewing now, if you if you want to make your edits and suggest changes or suggest text that you'd like to see, you can edit it at etherpadpp internationalnet slash p slash capital C A S H capital P L A N K or cash blank. <clears throat> Feel free to make edits. It's all versioned. So there you go. All right, moving back to the agenda then. Putting this on hold. Uh, Joe, are there any US Pirate Party issues? I, I saw that the National Party has announced their upcoming conference the end of May, the beginning of June, right? Yes, yes. Um, one moment, please. Uh, is there any any issues we should discuss for upcoming yeah, decisions? So, so I'm just trying to get to a quieter place in my house. Hold on. Uh, yeah, no worries. So there was a question on how the nomination should be done. Um, I advocated. Even though it wasn't my place to, I advocated for being able to anyone to be nominated to anything. Um, but I was hoping to steal the some of the processes from the way we do things in here in Mass for our, our nominations and elections, you know, and doing it through an email format. Steve, I understand that uh, you've done it the last few times with uh, doing it through, is it through an email or through a database? You mean, you mean it's uh, people deciding to, to run? No, I mean the actual technical process. Oh, you, you mean, mean voting. Like voting? For the voting and like, and how to do nominations. So both, of, both the actual technical aspect of it, as well as the um what process we should really take um they were talking about how to even vote it and they really wanted to push it towards a true democracy where everybody and anyone can vote and i didn't really know how they, even though i do agree with the true democracy approach i would love to see a true democracy i just don't know how we could account for that typically it was always the states voting for That's all the, the bylaws say. So yeah, unless they change the bylaws. I think what they're planning on doing is doing a popular vote and then having all the states vote to say if they ratify that or not. Again, so. from among whom? How did do, do they just do they have a definition of what a member is? Like who's entitled to vote? I think they were planning on sending out a mass email to everyone on the email list. I think that was the plan. I can see how this both is something that is ideal and problematic all at the same time. I mean, my own thought process is this. I think the National Party needs to move towards a membership, individual membership model where members pay dues. That is not what the bylaws say, um, nor is there even a definition of what a member is and how one qualifies to be a member. And to just open it up that way and be like, well, anyone on the Discord can vote. I mean, I mean, I suppose you can have kind of a plebiscite in that sense, but I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, to, to answer Joe's earlier question about how we've typically done is, you know, we've, you know, gotten nominations and that's just basically kind of like a sign up for your nomination, right? Yeah, hey, will you do this job, please? What? Hey, will you do this job, please? 
Well, there's I, I'm just I'm just talking talking through stuff right now. Now for voting, we would typically, you know, our notion of you know the electorate was basically people on the supporters email list and what we would do is mail them out you know a little announcement about the election a link to a voting page and candidate bios and a voting token voting token just being a like a like a six digit number or something along those lines so they'd fill you'd fill out the ballot which was just you know a web form including and including the voting token and so what we would do is then go through and you know make sure the voting tokens submitted were valid you know we don't know who got which token but we do know which ones were given out and then you know that's we just count from there yeah actually that would work much better so i will go ahead and present this on our next meeting coming up this sunday and uh are we having a are we doing a video meeting this Sunday by the way? Because it is Easter Sunday. For the National Party or Pirate News? No, for Pirate News. I mean we can we can decide it being Easter Sunday we will not have one, sure. Is that that's okay with you? Are you proposing such a thing? Yeah, I am because I I am deeply spiritual. Good for you. Is that fine with you, Joe? I mean, uh, sorry, Steve. You know, Easter Easter for me is one of those times of years where the day after the candy is cheap. <laughs> Unlike Joe, I am not terribly spiritual, but I do like chocolate bunnies. Um, I'm I'm fine with uh, taking Sunday off. All right, great. Yeah. I'm I'm less religious, more spiritual. If that makes sense. So I find more purpose in the fasting than I do the actual day, but, um, you know, trying to live life right. That's fine. So. All right, that yeah, sounds, sounds good. good to me. So we'll, we won't have pirate news this Sunday. Instead, we will post this. <laughs> okay. And... So that being said, the other bit of news on the national level is that there's a candidate that would really like to run. And he goes by a very particular name. He is a comical person. And I believe we've discussed it a few times now. Yes. And, the um, candidate showed up at the meeting that was not the meeting last Thursday. <laughs> yes. We had a chat. Um, and you're still not, not feeling enthusiastic about the scenario? I mean, my, my, I will put it this way. For Massachusetts, our bylaws explicitly say that until we have registered 1% of all voters, we cannot run a candidate for, or technically we can't nominate or endorse a candidate for statewide office. So, you know, we can't kind of put any effort behind uh, a presidential candidate since the presidential candidate would be elected statewide. But also we couldn't run a Senate candidate. We couldn't run a gubernatorial candidate or auditor winter. Um, what would be the highest that we can run for? Would that US, be like Congress? Uh, the highest is kind of an interesting thing. Um, Governor's Council and uh, U.S. Congress. U.S. Congress. Mm -hmm. That's the one that's the there... fifty signatures. Sorry, say that again. That's the one with only a few signatures, or a lot less signatures. It's two thousand to get a candidate on the ballot in Massachusetts for U.S. House of Representatives. Whereas it's it's five thousand for something like auditor, um, it is ten thousand for um, governor, for example, um, president, senator. No, it, does that include at the state level? Yeah, the yeah go, I mean governor. Oh, yeah, yeah. Is a state level office. 
Yeah, no, I was having a, a moment there. <laughs> no worries. It's fine. Um, but it, for me, the, the broader issue is, does running a presidential candidate um, advance the pirate party or would it be, or with the effort that we would put into that, could we run lower level candidates um, that would advance our interests better? Um, and my my feeling is lower level candidates are are better. Plus, you know, I don't know. <laughs> who knows what's going to happen if it's going to be if, who the GOP is going to nominate? But so many of them look like crypto fascists anyway so <laughs> yeah i i i agree with you jamie i would rather have a win on a smaller scale and be able to do something concrete yes so that's my two cents for what it's worth well it's worth a lot you both of you have been a pillar of wisdom throughout the years that i have known you and you know, I take what you have very heavily, I, at least as far as whenever I'm doing anything on a national or even international levels. Um, and I am grateful that you have the confidence for me to actually be doing such things when you you gents seem to be much more keen and in, in line with actual logical on the ground sense than I do sometimes, where I feel like sometimes I end up up in the clouds. You know, with yeah, my I, ideals. Yeah, I mean, I've met Vernon, Vermin, um, or the the the. Oh, the, God, the his name, man. All right, I um, but you know, the this individual is, I mean, they they are a great protest candidate, <laughs> but um, you know, their platform is somewhat limited i mean i don't have anything against equines or dental hygiene but um you know there are other things that you could put on a platform <laughs> in fact i have even written in this individual during a primary on at least one occasion um and you know i i think for the the showmanship the the showmanship that's you know comes along with politics um you know, the, this individual has clearly made a name for themselves, but I th would prefer to run a, you know, to the extent that we do run candidates, I would prefer to run serious ones. Thank you for the kind yeah. word, Joe. I'm back at you, dude. It's so nice you're here. Mm -hmm. Tirelessly. I forward. And I think, I think you really speak to what Steve was saying really speaks to it. I mean, if we're going to be wasting our time, why why are we wasting our time um, when we could be backing real candidates and to make real changes? And I think a lot of the real victories that we need to make are on a small scale, just small scale, many of them. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the only real way to make long, sustained, effective change. You know, it's those little victories. You know, even if we have to compromise ever so slightly, um, every single person I've ever talked to about pirate and pirate ideals, they all agree. I have yet to have a single person disagree with my stance. And um, when I really talk to people, it's like, hey, I believe in your right to not have anyone up your butt. <laughs> and everyone's like, yeah, I like that. <laughs> so, like, no one has ever disagreed with me that you should have some privacy. I mean, there are certain areas that we agree, like when we're out in public, there, there's a certain amount of privacy loss that's going to happen. There's nothing we can do do about that because everyone on social media. But at home, you should. There's no reason why you should have somebody with surveillance on you, ever, for any reason. Don't agree with it in bathrooms, you know, and a, a lot of. A lot of that, so, and and not just the the whole privacy thing, but everything. You know, have yet to have somebody disagree with any of our our stances. Thanks, Joe. 
Um, any other U.S. Pirate Party issues that we should discuss? There's probably a few, but that's all I can remember at the moment. Okay. Um, so next was the American Data Privacy and Protection Act. Um, I, I know I have not had a chance to look that up and review it. Do you want to give a summary, Joe? Summary is it's got the best intentions, but the way it's worded is so disgustingly broad, like that it could apply to so many things, foreign or domestic, that it's kind of a Pandora's box at this point. Um, if they were to get really much more specific in the wording, I think it would be a lot better. Um, I understand what they're trying to do. I even agree with what they're trying to do with they're trying to limit the limit espionage as best they can. But, you know, I think uh, Steve made a, a good point when we were originally discussing this. And uh, Steve, if you want to remake that point. Sure. The I mean, I, I understand that folks in Washington um, are a little bent out of shape about the idea of TikTok mining data on American citizens and or getting their hands on data about American citizens. Not, not, well, not TikTok, but the Chinese government using TikTok to gather, collect data on American citizens or whatever. And, you know, the United States has had a tradition, a rich, rich tradition of collecting data on frickin' everybody. And, um, you know, this was revealed by, you know, Edward Snowden kind of opened the world's eyes to this, you know, some years ago. Um, but effectively, one of the outcomes of, you know, those revelations was that the safe harbor agreement that the U.S. and the EU had for, you know, exchange of data across the continental boundaries. Uh, my recollection is that the Europeans broke it because they said that, you know, hey, you tech companies in the United States, the way your intelligence, you know, bureaus operate, you can't guarantee the privacy of um, European citizens. Um, so it, it's kind of funny that we're, I'm amused that, you know, we're kind of calling China out for something that we, you know, have been called out ourselves for, and I may I suggest that we probably still do to assert to some extent. Probably, I'm sure we're doing it to ourselves. <laughs> Certainly doing it to everybody else in the world. Oh yeah. Uh, so for the American Privacy and Protection Act, um, I, I see there's a 2021, 2022 bill, but I'm not seeing a 2023 bill. I don't know. I mean, I thought things. No, no, not the Restrict Act. That this is this is the American Data Privacy and Protection Act. I don't think that's the Restrict Act. I mean, you know, requires most companies to limit collection, processing, and transfer of personal data. I don't think any of that's in the Restrict Act. I don't know. Perhaps we need to look at this further um, and track down what data privacy bills are before Congress before we decide one way or the other if we like them or not. Sounds fair. No. Um, here. No, I think it is the S six eight S point six eight six. S.686? Yeah. That's the Restrict Act. 
Yeah, it says restricting the emergence of security threats that risk information and communications technology act. Right, but the, the other one is the data privacy bill. Okay. It's called the American Data Privacy and Protection Act. It's HR 8152 from the 117th Congress, 2021 to 2022. <clears throat> so, yeah, I guess my recommendation would just be to look, so see what privacy bills are around and decide which to support and revisit that in two weeks. Does that work? Works for me. What about you, Joe? I agree. Okay, great. All right. Um, let's see. So local outreach, we, we've had an email uh, update. Uh, with some blog posts. Uh, we need another email update with the various events and other stuff coming up. Um, For the conference, um, I believe we've had signups. Um, we have till the 24th. I think it's like, it's like that. I believe it's the 24th that people should make their suggestions. So if there's something you want to Something you want to discuss at the conference on May 13th? That would be a, you know, put things forward. Um, and then we, we're not going to have the video. We're not going to have pirate news um, this upcoming uh, Sunday. Um, and then. Um, for oh, the conference, sorry, um, can for the cookout conference coming up. Yeah. Uh, is there any chance we can re hashtag the the state of education and also re uh, go over a topic of mental health and different forms for that as well, and just kind of like tie in the mental health aspect uh, and the state of homelessness and new buildings and stuff like that. So you mean update the, the platform? No, 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 just like our, our current pulse of what's going on with the mental health status in Massachusetts with, um, we're actually leading the nation in gun violence. Yay. We have the least amount of gun violence out of all the nation. Excellent. So, but I wanted to touch, I, I didn't really want to touch the two way cause it's still a really hot topic nationally. Um, so I kind of don't want to touch that one with a 10 foot pole, but I definitely wanted to touch upon homelessness and what we're doing about that, uh, mental health and the emerging, uh, would, would essentially kind of ties into the homelessness thing a little bit. And then wanted to also shoot. What was that one that I just had a second ago? Education. Education. Yes. Making sure that we are, um, because there's a couple of entrepreneurial programs that I would like to link and have people have a resource to so that we can uh, educate people on how to advance careers, stuff like that. So. So I, I, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm confused. What, what, what do you want to, what about those specifically do you want to discuss at the conference? Um. I just wanted to do a little bit on the educational part about where to get resources, uh, where different workshops for entrepreneurs, like if they have a good idea, stuff like that, um, and just have those resources built in. You know, where to find them, here's how you get them. Because a lot of the people who generally look at pirate parties are at that college age. And so having that resource right there available saying, hey, if you're looking for this, here, here you go. Um, Cause a lot of the activists there or the up and coming activists are of that age. Okay. So. 
Sure. I mean, I can, do you want me to send you the link and you can just write up what, what you, how much time you need and what you want to discuss? Yes. Okay. Can, thank you. Sure. I'll, yeah. It's, it's at, uh, I mean, it's, it's at masspirates.org slash blog slash conference. And there's a link from there, but I'm happy to go send it to you. And we'll, um, for those people watching later, we'll put it in the description as well. So, yeah, all right. Um, so with that, um, anything else to update, discuss? Nothing here. No, nothing at this time. Uh, motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Aye. Aye. Aye as well. All right. All in favor. All. All. All are in favor. So with that, uh, thank you, Joe and Steve. Uh, and this is a member meeting, so members are allowed to attend. Uh, you can. Go to our sign up at our activist list and you'll get notifications about these. Um, for those watching and uh, we'd love to have you come and participate as pirates. So with that, thank you, the two of you very much. I hope you have a wonderful time and I hope those watching found this useful. And with that, I shall stop the recording. Bye. Have a good night.